As anyone who lives in or has recently visited St. Pete can tell you, downtown St. Pete is growing at an astonishing rate. As the new buildings keep rising and the new residents keep arriving, an exciting amount of new business and development has followed. In today's video, we'll show you what's new in and around downtown St. Pete for the summer of 2021. Whether it's beers or cocktails, breakfast or dessert, we've got something new for you. Be sure to stick around till the end where we'll take you to a brand new craft coffee and cocktail bar inside of a 100 year old hotel, plus a hot new spot for dining, dancing, and live music. Our first stop of the day was also the newest of the businesses we'd be visiting as we arrived just a couple hours into its soft opening. It quickly became clear that the word had gotten out about the soft opening as we found a line of customers awaiting Valkyrie's fresh baked donuts. But the line moved fast and we soon had our own mouth-watering donut, which we couldn't wait to try. We quickly found outdoor seating just a few steps down the block at Valhalla Bakery, which we learned to have the same owners as Valkyrie. And knowing how delicious Valhalla's baked goods are, we had little doubt in our minds that our donut was going to be amazing. Show them what we got. This is a guava cream cheese donut from Valkyrie Donuts. Their grand opening is this morning. What do you think? I think it's delicious. The guava flavor is really good. I like the consistency of both the filling and the donut. You better try this. Hey guys, we're here on the corner of Central Avenue and 25th Street, and we just left Valkyrie Donuts. Today was their soft opening, and I think we were both pretty impressed. And Valkyrie is actually under the same ownership as Valhalla Bakery, which is located right behind us and is just half a block down the street from Valkyrie. We actually visited Valhalla Bakery a few months ago when we filmed for our Grand Central District video. So if you're interested in more businesses in the Grand Central District, we'd recommend watching that video after this one. Next up, we have a new coffee shop to check out. So we'll see you over there. After devouring the tasty donut, there was still one thing that our morning was clearly missing, coffee. And this led us just a few blocks south to our next stop of the day at the Chelsea St. Pete. Upon entering the Chelsea, we were happy to find that they offered a variety of hot and cold coffees and teas. And with the temperature outside already pushing 90 degrees, we were quick to order our drinks on ice. Visitors will find it hard not to feel comfortable at the Chelsea with its delightfully homey feel and laid back atmosphere. Our orders came out fast and ice cold and quickly cooled us down on the steamy Florida day. We found the Chelsea to be a wonderful place to relax and re-energize while planning out our adventures. Visitors will also find the Chelsea to offer a variety of baked goods along with an enchanting back garden area which we had to explore before moving on to our next stop. All right, we're just leaving the Chelsea St. Pete. It is located in the Warehouse Arts District, so we did have to stray a bit from Central, but it was only a few blocks south of where we just were, and we think the trip was worth it. Yeah, definitely. And I was really impressed with my drink. It's a mixture of lemonade and their cold brew coffee, and it's not even on the menu, but it was a recommendation of the barista, and it was a great one. It was perfectly energizing and refreshing for a hot summer day like today. 
I also love the fact that they don't charge anything extra for milk alternatives like oat milk. And they also only charge $1 for an extra shot of espresso in case you need that additional pick-me-up. Now our next stop is taking us back to the Grand Central District, so we'll see you there. Back at the Grand Central District, we were impressed to find that this pedal pub was already out on Central Avenue, just barely afternoon. We made our way just a block off Central Avenue to First Avenue South, which became St. Pete's second Pete's General location in June of 2021. This was another place that seemed to be extremely popular, as there was a line to the door on our visit. Visitors to the new Pete's General will be greeted with the wonderful smell of freshly baked bagels, of which Pete's offers seven types to choose from, along with an assortment of other baked goods. Still somewhat full from the massive donut we had eaten earlier, we were eager to receive our order and to find out what the Pete's General hype was all about. After a short wait, we received a text message stating that our bagel was ready. So we're just leaving Pete's General in the Grand Central District. And while Pete's isn't new to St. Pete, it is new to the Grand Central District as this location just opened up about three weeks ago. And we say it's going really well. That place was packed this morning, which is a really good sign. But unfortunately, all of the spots in the shade were taken. So we're gonna have to find another spot to try this bagel sandwich. So it's already one o'clock in the afternoon and it is getting hot. And since we were driving by our apartment complex anyway, we decided to just stop by to enjoy this bagel out on our balcony. Mm. That looks good. So we got an everything bagel sandwich with their cream cheese and homemade hot honey. Look at all that. You gonna give it a try? Of course. The cream cheese is very creamy, a little salty, and the honey brings in just a hint of sweetness. I'm not yet feeling the, the hot kick. Maybe later though. All right, Skyler, what do you think of the bagel? Well, the flavor is excellent. I will say it's a little chewier than I was expecting, but we're definitely not bagel connoisseurs, and I've never had a bagel from New York, so maybe it's normal for New York bagels to be on the chewier side. If you know, let us know in the comments. Yeah, I would definitely get one of these again. If you're driving through the Edge District on Central Avenue or 11th Street, it will be hard to miss the neighborhood's newest occupant, a 30-foot sculpture known as the Sun on the Edge, which was just completed in mid-July. We found it interesting to learn that the sculpture was created by a New York artist and Israeli native who used repurposed concrete from New York streets to sculpt the giant sun. Another new development you may notice when driving down First Avenue North and South is the construction of several raised concrete platforms for the rapid transit project known as the Sunrunner. The bus service will run along a 10.3 mile route and for a charge of 225 one way will allow bus riders to travel between downtown St. Pete and St. Pete Beach much more quickly than the current system. The Sunrunner service is scheduled for completion in July of 2022. As the day was continuing to heat up, we decided it was again time to cool off with some tasty beverages. And that led us downtown to an old local favorite with a brand new location. First time visitors to Hops 2.0 will walk into a much different experience than that of its beloved predecessor, Hops and Props. The new location offers an expansive interior with over 3,500 square foot of space and plenty of room for games, comfortable seating, and a spot for live music. One thing that remains unchanged is the large selection of craft beers on tap, as we were happy to find 32 to choose from during our visit. All right, Jamie, tell them what you got. So I have a strawberry shortcake imperial seltzer, which is something we've never tried before. It smells really good. That doesn't even taste like alcohol. And it's 8%. 9%. Right? 9%. Oh That's boy. a good drink. That's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. <laughs> so 
So Skyler's gonna try a sour from 81 Bay. It's good. It's not very sweet. It's tart. But the flavor's good? Yeah, really good for a hot day like today. I've got the Civil Society Fresh IPA. We've not tried this one before either. I like it. It's not super sweet. It is a little hoppy, but not too much hops. It's not good. After taking full advantage of the free samples, we ordered pints of the Blueberry Lemon Sour and a German-style Hefeweizen, both of which were smooth and refreshing. So we're getting ready to leave Hops 2.0, and it's 2.0 because it recently moved from its prior location on the pier. And we're really impressed with this new location. It's got like twice the space of the old one, there's games, there's flat screen TVs, and the thing I think we're most impressed with is the fact that it's open air and yet it's incredibly comfortable in there, even on a 90 degree day like today. But after having a few cold ones, it's time for some more food. Our craving for carbs took us back to Central Avenue for our much anticipated first visit to Del Moro's Fresh Pasta To Go. On entering Del Moro's, you'll find only a small number of tables and chairs, as this pasta is indeed made to be taken to go. Visitors will find the menu to be quite simple, with two types of fresh noodles, which can be paired with seven types of sauces, four types of toppings, and tiramisu for dessert. And those who time it right will be able to enjoy watching the fresh pasta being made right in front of them as they await their order. And while you may be confused how a fresh pasta place can be considered fast food, you'll soon find out why as your order arrives in just a few short minutes. During our visit, we had the opportunity to sample two types of pasta with three types of sauces. And while we had nowhere close to the appetite to eat it all, we both do agree that it was some of the best fast food that either of us had ever had. Skyler's favorite was rigatoni with red sauce and bacon, and mine was a fettuccine with Alfredo sauce. And of course, we couldn't leave without trying the house-made tiramisu. And when your tiramisu is this good, you really only need to offer one dessert. Because they make the pasta fresh, they do recommend eating it either at the restaurant or taking it to go and eating it right away. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to show people you can eat it on the go. So we just left El Maro's and we are so happy to finally get to try this place out. We have been excited to try it ever since we heard about it coming to St. Pete several months ago. Yeah, so Del Maro's Fresh Pasta To Go started in Venice, Italy, and since then it has expanded through Europe and Canada, but this is the first location here in the United States. And it may also be the first fast food place in all of downtown St. Pete, we're not sure, but it's definitely not your typical fast food place. While the food does come out in the amount of time of your typical fast food place, it is authentic Italian restaurant quality pasta made in-house. And the staff there were so kind and generous, they did let us try a few of their pastas and also a dessert. But that means we are stuffed. We had plans to show you another restaurant here later today, but we're gonna have to scratch that plan. But that's okay because we still have a few more places to take you to, so let's go. Our next stop took us to The Scott a brand new craft coffee and cocktail bar located within the Cordova Inn, one of St. Pete's oldest hotels. In fact, the Cordova Inn was originally named the Hotel Scott when it was constructed back in 1921, making it exactly 100 years old. Upon entering the recently refashioned 38-unit hotel, visitors may feel like they've gone back in time. With its blue velvet furnishings and art deco design, we found the Scott to blend the old with the new in a beautiful way. 
But what really drew us to the Scott was the Cordova Martini, an espresso martini which we'd heard rave reviews about and couldn't wait to try. Made with local hog batch espresso and Banyan Reserve vodka, the martini is truly a St. Pete original and did not fall short of our lofty expectations. The perfect combination of vodka and coffee was just what we needed to help finish off the last bit of our day in St. Pete. In addition to its cocktail offerings from 4 to 11 p.m., we also learned that the Scott transforms into a coffee bar from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. After a great experience at the Scott, there was only one more new spot in St. Pete that we couldn't miss, which led us to the new restaurant, dancing, and live music venue at the corner of Central and Beach Drive. We were drawn to El Conte for its great music, which we had heard while walking by on a few occasions since its opening in late April. But we were especially happy to find the menu included Turkish coffee, a type of coffee which Skylar had yet to experience. Skylar was impressed with his very first Turkish coffee. The baba ganoush hit the spot as well, as we enjoyed it along with the dirty martini while waiting for the musician to start. To our delight, the musician came on just before sunset. We agreed that the music was worth the wait, as the Turkish and flamenco melodies provided a relaxing way to cap off an amazing day in St. Petersburg. Thanks for joining us on another day of exploring what's new in St. Pete. If you're interested in seeing more of St. Pete, the Gulf beaches, or other Florida content, please make sure to subscribe and turn the notifications on. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching!